It's another sellout at Anfield in a season when the gates have frequently been closed an hour before kickoff. Seats are so hard to get that even John Barnes was turned away from the Liverpool ticket office when he tried to buy a couple yesterday. And his birthplace, Jamaica, is one of over 50 countries who will watch the BBC coverage of this match. Ten are taking the transmission live and uh, Jan Molby is working for the Danish TV. Michel Platini is here for the French. And the projected worldwide audience is 200 million, the biggest ever, it said, for an English league game. And they will see an unchanged Liverpool lineup with Mike Hooper continuing to deputise in goal for Bruce Grobelaar. And in the light of this week's European Championship draw, it's worth noting that four of these players, Lawrenson, Whelan, Aldridge and Houghton, could well face England in June. And the Republic of Ireland might also call on Liverpool's Jim Beglin, who's recovering from a broken leg. Well, another of Jack Charlton's defenders to miss this match is Arsenal's David O'Leary. He rests an Achilles injury and is replaced at number five by Gus Caesar. But the Republic of Ireland theme is strengthened by the return at number ten of Niall Quinn, one of nine Arsenal players on duty who helped beat Liverpool in the Littlewoods final last year. And one of the newcomers carries a lucky omen. Nigel Winterburn scored at Anfield last season for Wimbledon in a victory that arguably cost Liverpool the championship. Well, Liverpool to kick off, attacking the cop end with a very good record against Arsenal at Anfield in recent years. Liverpool have won nine of the last 12 meetings here, including the last six in succession. And they get the first free kick against Tony Adams, who scored here in a defeat last season. But you have to go back to the 74-75 season to find an Arsenal victory here. They're in the yellow shirts today. Gillespie takes the kick. Header out was by Winterburn, playing at right back. And Barnes starts at outside left. Rowcastle got the tackle in. Steve Nicholl making a run forward, Ronnie Whelan. Gus Caesar, not a good clearance. McMahon. And that struck Adams as he came out. It's a corner. Everybody on the cop so excited by this prolific Liverpool run. So much interest renewed in football this season and nowhere more than here. Barnes has placed the ball on the far side but he couldn't get it uh, beyond Winterburn. This is Nickel trying to find Houghton. Barnes. Nickel again. Bent in, Aldridge was there, so was Adams. Martin Hayes. Arsenal know it's going to be a battle. In it goes again from Lawrence. Adams heads it out. Gillespie. Houghton, number nine. The way George Graham is elected to play here is two big, strong men up the front. Starting the match together, Alan Smith and Niall Quinn. With the four there, you can see in midfield. Quinn. Houghton with Samson. Barnes. Oh. Beardsley, got the touch from Aldridge, got it back, look for McMahon, sweeping move by Liverpool, and McMahon unable to control the ball at the end of it. What a brilliant move, and at the heart of it, Peter Beardsley, a little touch off in the first place to Aldridge, and then the nicely delivered ball for McMahon. Tangle between Gillespie and Smith.
Steve Williams <laughs> challenging Barnes fairly. This is Smith. Hansen's long legs were needed there. Good competitive play by Williams to catch Barnes in that position and bustle him off the ball. And in that corner where the Arsenal supporters are gathered, they have a throw in. Winterburn. Adams was up, Gillespie's header out, Richardson shot back, and Hooper stretching, got a right hand to it, as Smith might have blocked his vision. Houghton for Liverpool. Beardsley is racing into an offside position. Well, an anxious moment here for Liverpool. Richardson shot, Smith stretched, and Hooper had to. Houghton. Barnes. And there's Williams at him again. <laughs> Faintest hint of an apology there from Steve Williams. Referee hasn't even given a free kick, he gave a throw in. Good touch by Aldridge. This is McMahon. And Houghton. Well, some of the football Liverpool have played this season. Typified by that last move. Just look at this. They're so confident with their touch play. Aldridge with the flick and McMahon with the run on goal. Kenny Sansom had to come across and Houghton was free on this side. John Barnes. Houghton. Nickel. And gave it away to Richardson now. Rowcastle for Arsenal. In the way was Hansen. Aldridge beating Caesar, Sansom covering, Hayes. Tussle between Whelan and Williams. And Tony Adams hooks the ball clear. On by Quinn, looking for Smith. This is Gillespie. And now Sansom for Arsenal. Richardson. Winterburn's free on the right. Nickel goes to check him. Tony Adams is loping forward from uh, his defensive position here, hoping to get something inside that penalty area from the throw. And he did. This is Adams. Well, chances against Liverpool at Anfield are few and far between, and it was a back player there that got into a good position. Tony Adams had to take that quickly on the volley. It wasn't a bad effort. Aldridge. And it was Sansom's header back. Smith, 
Lukic using the range of uh, Smith and Quinn to try and drop his long kicks into the Liverpool danger zone. Here's Hayes, it's uh, Richardson who's gone down injured. Beardsley. Houghton. Oh, Caesar was stretching a bit, but Winterburn wasn't. Arsenal still got Richardson out of the action. But look at this, it's Niall Quinn being put away there by Winterburn. Smith's in the middle, it's still Quinn. And it came off Nickel corner. Nigel Winterburn setting up that attack for Arsenal with a well-judged pass. Well, for this corner, Hayes, Adams and Caesar are standing in the near post area. But it went straight to the goalkeeper. Free kick given against Rowcastle for a foul on Hansen. getting good backing from their travelling fans they've only won one of their last nine first division games this after a previous sequence of ten consecutive victories well a couple of minutes left in the first half and uh, as we saw at Ipswich uh, last Sunday never a bad time to score then what is just sometimes that the psychological effect of a goal coming up to the half-time whistle can determine how a team feels here's McMahon oh and Whelan's in there and Caesar came across and the linesman is flagging not for a penalty I don't think he's flagging that I think the ball may have gone over the line when Lukic collected it is he well Karen Barrett has acknowledged the flag the cop thought there might have been a handball against Caesar. I don't think that was the case. But he's given the ball to Barnes nonetheless. Good running by Barnes. Oh, Sansom needed to get a foot in there. Whelan. Now Rowcastle to Smith. And Williams. Referee has told Gus Caesar how long there is to go to half time. The Arsenal number five, who's in today because O'Leary is being rested with his, his own injury. I don't think Gus Caesar at this moment is at full throttle. Barnes into the last minute of the first half here at Anfield. Liverpool nil, Arsenal nil. Nickel for Liverpool. Given away, Winterburn. Rowcastle for Arsenal. And Hansen, who's made some good interceptions in this half, showing the leadership you'd expect of the experienced captain. To stop Rowcastle there. Now that was Barnes looking for Nickel. Barnes took on Caesar. Still Barnes. Brilliant. Carton couldn't convert. McNan three in the way. Tony Adams had got a put to it. Well, McMahon won that back wonderfully well. Beardsley. Oh, a goal for Aldridge. Right on half-time, it's John Aldridge. What about McMahon's contribution there? Absolutely fantastic. No wonder they're shaking his hand. He won it back on the touchline motored away three facing him into Beardsley Lukic narrowing the angle at the near post got a hand to it but look at Aldridge that's the poacher's position and John Aldridge makes it 20 goals for the season 19 of them in the league and Arsenal crack just before the half-time whistle
Stonebridge won't score a simpler goal, but the work that went into it by McMahon and before that by others when the original attack was cleared, including John Barnes, was memorable. And there'll be a roar as they go off because the half reached a great climax with one of the Liverpool goals that will be discussed in its own way for quite a while. The finish was a formality, but what preceded it could be enjoyed over and again. And a lot of that ovation will be for the players who contributed to the build-up. Half-time score at Anfield, Liverpool 1, Arsenal 0. Arsenal make a substitution at the start of the second half. Young Michael Thomas has come on in the centre of the defence for the injured Gus Caesar. And looking back on the goal, the way Barnes went past Caesar as the attack built up, it was clear that he was handicapped without taking anything away from that glittering move. So Arsenal have now got to try and do what they achieved in the Littlewoods Cup final last season. That's come from behind against Liverpool. But somehow you think it's harder at Anfield than it is at Wembley. On by Quinn. This is Nickel. That was Winterburn. Good header, Williams. Hansen. Aldridge will be pleased to have reached the 20 mark in first team goals this season. Nine, in fact, have been uh, penalty kicks. And he also scored on the opening day at Highbury with a header. So, uh, in a sense, he's done a personal double over Arsenal this season. Here's Kevin Richardson. Oh, it's not a bad ball at all. Martin Hayes. And the cross here for Rowcastle. Off the line, Alan Hansen, I think. Keeper beaten. The Liverpool captain saved them on the line. And huge sighs of relief from the Liverpool contingent because Arsenal almost started the second half the way that Liverpool finished the first. It was an inspired run. Hayes was over on the left. And Lawrenson couldn't get to it. It was a lovely floated cross. David Rowcastle got the half strike on it, but it didn't have the power to beat Hansen. <laughs> Quinn's header only falls for Lawrenson. It's rather un Liverpool like, but uh, it gives him the chance, perhaps quite uh, intentionally, to make the switch because Mark Lawrenson, who kicked the ball out, has been. Nursing a bit of a knock, and he's coming off the pitch, shaking his head, he can't carry on, which is bad luck on him, but it gives Nigel Spackman the chance to make what's become a fairly rare appearance. Down to the tunnel goes Lawrenson, so uh, he's injured, and uh, so is Venison at the moment. position one of the few in the Liverpool team to have changed hands two or three times and Nigel Spatman in fact has gone into the right back spot as a straight replacement <laughs> that was Smith worked hard to get that Alan Smith <laughs> and to find a colleague in Sanson Richardson Spatman, Beardsley, who wants his touch, wasn't sure, but look how it bounced for him again and how he took advantage. Great run by Beardsley and John Lukic just got his left hand down. Beardsley made the most of the run of the ball there and hit a shot which Lukic turned away for a corner. Gillespie waiting, Aldridge on the line. And Lukic can gather that one in a little more comfort. He's so instinctive, is Peter Beardsley. When the chance comes, he only needs a split second. And 
Johnson. Aldridge, Beardsley, Houghton's gone away to the right with Kenny Sansom checking him. Adams. And Whelan was in so quick on Richardson. Aldridge to his right, chance for Liverpool. Aldridge, good save. John Lukic. Textbook stuff, really, from Aldridge's shot. The goalkeeper narrowing the angle and standing up. Corner to Liverpool. Barnes to take it. Away by Hayes. That was a good save. I don't think you could blame Aldridge because uh, Liverpool built it up with Whelan, really, who saw it so quick. So we've been playing now for an hour. Liverpool still have the edge, but Arsenal have uh, had a say in this opening period of the second half. McMahon. Although uh, one also has to remember that John Lukic has made two very good stops to prevent Liverpool getting what might be the critical second goal here. Quinn. That's uh, meant for Smith. The ricochet favours Houghton. Nobody else on that side for Liverpool at the moment. So he's pausing. And had to give it away in the end. Aldridge gets it back, though. Spackman. Aldridge. Beardsley. Oh, brilliantly done by Peter Beardsley! Designed to bring any ground to its feet. What can you say apart from pure genius? Beardsley took them all on, went round Michael Thomas, tricked the keeper, and made it 2 0 to Liverpool after 61 minutes. win for Arsenal and Liverpool would appear to have broken the backbone of Arsenal's resistance and what a spectacular way in which to do it McMahon Kick. Arsenal just panicking a bit now, stung by one of the goals to remember from this exceptional Anfield season. Peter Beardsley, whose overall play has been excellent, caps it with a stunning individual effort. Words really not needed to describe a goal like that, it was all there for the crowd to enjoy. Short to Beardsley, looking for Houghton. Oh, well played Gillespie. This is Houghton. Beardsley, let it run to Barnes. Oh, and he nearly got through. They're turning it on now. This is now Liverpool's scene. They're two up. And the passes are just slotting in one after the other. And I tell you what. We saw a great goal by Barnes here earlier this season on Match of the Day against Queen's Park Rangers. Watch this from Beardsley. I think it's possibly even better. 
vintage stuff. Well, have Arsenal got enough left in the locker to stretch Liverpool yet? The cop are shouting champions, and nobody is going to argue with that. Winterburn. Smith and Quinn coming in, I hit the post, and away by Whelan. Arsenal are not finished. And Niall Quinn proves the point, and unlucky. Came in on the blind side, and that was a good effort. He got in there between two players and hit the post. Corner to Arsenal. Smith. Well, Arsenal are left now asking themselves the questions that so many visiting teams have asked here this season. How do you stop this club's prolific run and a burst of goal scoring by Liverpool that we ne really need to refer to because of the way they're going, they might even get to 100 league goals. to the last five minutes away by Gillespie and Aldridge and Thomas and Aldridge has just about found Beardsley they've got two others up now Houghton's to his right the little ball lofted in for Ronnie Whelan well Whelan got a bit mixed up there but the ball that Beardsley played to him was a joy in itself Beardsley at times is running things in that number seven shirt, somewhat similarly to the way Dalgleish often used to look at that little ball in there, but Whelan stretching lost his balance. But he's so nimble and he's so inventive. This is a brief message for the Arsenal supporters. If you remain in position at the end of the game, you will be escorted back to your transport. Thank you. Offside. The way that the season began means a warning to the way to the police and the owner of Fort Escort, E451 KOM, for the police on the way. Not much joy here then for Arsenal. They've kept plugging away, I must say that. That's Richardson, and here's Perry Groves. When called upon, the goalkeeper who foiled Groves there has looked pretty compact. Mike Hooper. Houghton. Always busy down that right-hand side. Kenny Sanson wanting help. It came via Hayes and Adams. Here's Richardson. Even now, Aldridge is cutting off the back pass. Liverpool working in the 90th minute. One of their great fortes. And that goes down as match number 23 for Liverpool. Unbeaten. 18 wins and five draws now, and Peter Beardsley, whose birthday it is on Monday, will be 27. He'll get a few birthday cards from the Copites, I would think. One of the great goals of the season, enjoyed by a huge worldwide audience. Liverpool's performance still touching heights of quality that Arsenal couldn't reach, despite the fact that Arsenal made a stubborn bid to stay in the match in the second half. But the championship gets ever nearer as Liverpool win by two goals to nil. Very nice to see you at Liverpool. Thank you. What did you think of the game? 
Well, I think it's a good game. I think that I never see an English team play like a continental team, like a French team or Italian team. They play very, very good. Liverpool played different of Arsenal. They play with players who are technical, like Barnes, uh, Britsley, Willen, McMahon, Uten. I think uh, it's a continental uh, team. And Arsenal play height with height balls uh, different, uh, different of uh, Liverpool. What about the second goal? Oh, second goal, uh, I think that Butzle was his, uh, an Italian or French player, <laughs> make a very good goal because he was he make uh, uh, inside the, the legs of uh, the defense and after he, he make, I don't know the name, it's a louche in French. It's a very, very important and very beautiful goal for the, for the French TV and for the BBC. Now, looking back over this 23-match unbeaten run, I mean, it is getting nearer and nearer to the, the Leeds United record of 29. They, they say they don't talk about things like that at Liverpool, but it must have gone through the minds of one or two of the players that this is a bit exceptional, even by Liverpool standards. Yeah, I think so. You know, obviously, like you say, 23 games, it is incredible, and uh, we just have to hope that next week it becomes 24. Mm. What about your own role in the side? How pleased are you with the way you've been playing? I'm delighted, you know. The, like I say, the most important thing is the team. And to be part of a team like this, well, obviously, it's great. You know, great credit to the lads, everybody that's came in. I feel Mike Hooper had a great game today and probably deserves a lot of credit. You know, to keep a clean sheet the way he did, obviously, he's done well. And uh, anybody that's come in has done that well. Did you feel with that huge price tag around your head that when you first came, maybe John Barnes perhaps got a little bit more praise than you did? And, and maybe even in one game, I think, you more, more than one, you were actually pulled off. Did, did you go through a period of uncertainty earlier in the season? Not really. You know, I think John Barnes came here and set the place alight and deservedly so, played very well. And I think that helped in many ways because that took the pressure off me. You know, but the fact that the boss paid the money that he did gave me the confidence to come here and, and do what I'm hopefully doing for the fans. Uh, when you get to this stage of the season, really, and you're playing one of the, the people who are up closest to the, the top of the league, the result's more important than performance. And that's not to say that, they, that we don't encourage them to play well. Obviously, they have played well. They had to play well to overcome Arsenal. But the result is more important than the performance. And obviously, to get three points and against one of your rivals is... That's a great result for us. While you are down there on the bench, so conscious of the result as the priority, has there ever been a time this season when you've managed to relax and sit back and think, I'm actually enjoying the way we're playing here? The result is a priority. But I tell you what, there's been some great performances as well. Um, and there's been a lot of times this season when not only myself sat and enjoyed the, the match, uh, there's been a lot of games at Anfield that the gates have been locked at and no reason I haven't been a full house is because the visiting fans haven't brought enough supporters to fill their, their allocated space. But uh, there's not only me sat back and admired it, there's been thousands of others. Lots of people are comparing your team now with Liverpool sides of the past. Um, you obviously played in many of them and people talk about the 79 team, don't they, as being a vintage Liverpool side. Yeah. Where do you think this, this present team stands by comparison? Well, it's not important, really, uh, the comparisons. That's only for people to, to try and make conversation. The most important thing is that we're good enough to beat the opposition in any one day. And that's, that'll always be a rule of thumb. That doesn't matter what's happened. People always say, well, the 79 team was a great team. Shanks is a great team. And they were great teams. So it doesn't really matter to us what people think are the best. It's irrelevant because they can't play now. This is a team that's the most important for Liverpool Football Club because this is a team that's playing at the moment. And how good is it, in your opinion? Well, it's good enough to be top of the league, but I think 15 points now. I thought I saw a vestige of a smile there just for a moment, maybe not. Anyway, Liverpool's form is doing no harm to Bobby Robson's chances of sleeping peacefully these days either. He must have welcomed the purchase of Barnes and Beersley because their understanding of each other's special abilities can only improve with time. And today it was Beardsley's turn to take the eye. And you see so many players freeze these days with one-on-one -on -one situations with the opposing keeper. It was really a pleasure to observe Beardsley's composure in this situation, just lifting it over the diving keeper at the right moment. But perhaps that goal overshadowed the other good news for England, Steve McMahon's impressive and consistent form, highlighted by his contribution to Liverpool's first goal. Look at the way in which he's chasing this ball into touch here to prevent it going. Look, he's on the track, turns round, beats his opponent to the ball and goes looking for a goal. Past one man, releases it at the perfect time to Beardsley in a good position. And if you think that John Aldridge was suspiciously offside there, I have to have some sympathy with that view, but I have to say to you that it in no way devalues McMahon's uh, contribution to that goal. 
and with Brian Robson, Peter Reed, Neil Webb, Trevor Stephen and co, also in sparkling form, suddenly there appears to be an abundance of midfield talent available to Bobby Robson. Well, back to the basics, and this is what Liverpool's win meant. 15 points clear at the top, all the chasing clubs apart from Everton, lost ground and nothing short of a Devon Lock type calamity would seem to be able to prevent them clinching the league title for the 17th time.